Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to Let's Try Going Medieval. Going Medieval is a brand new colony building simulation. It's going to be very reminiscent of something like RimWorld, except instead of being sci-fi, it is, well, medieval. It is based in, uh, I think the 1300s England is what I remember seeing in the intro. It's also 3D and that includes multiple Z levels, i.e. you can go upstairs and you can dig down and do those sorts of things. Let's jump into a new game and take a quick look at this. We've got different types of scenarios to choose from, so no attacks, lots of attacks, or standard, and even then we've got a difficulty uh, selector as well. A uh, couple of different starting scenarios, new life, guess it's the standard one, we're going to start with three people, X number of resources, lone wolf, I guess we're going to start with a single person and less stuff, and then we can also create our new scenarios over here. Again, very reminiscent of RimWorld, and that's a good thing. I No complaints about that over here, it's an excellent game. We have a randomly generated world over here. Uh, you can choose a different random seed and share. For example, if I go something like 18, 18, 18, there we go. This is the world here, and you guys should have theoretically the same world. We've got a few different map types as well. Uh, the name of our settlement as well as the heraldry. And so we can choose one of these sites. We can't just choose any arbitrary site. We'll choose this one over here in the valley. Plentiful vegetation, fertile soil and clay, moderate amount of limestone, lesser amounts of gold, silver, iron, and salt. Well, if I'm playing this game, we're going to need plenty of salt, that's for sure, actually. So maybe I should go somewhere else, but we'll go with this. It's going to be fine. we got three randomly generated people over here. We can, of course, change them up as well. If we, uh, uh, I can randomize. There we go. Okay, that's randomizing everything. I wasn't sure if that was just the button to change the look or not. So right now, if we went, we'd had Lena Bradwarden or Bradwardine, maybe, over here, who has passion for intellectual tasks and medicine. She's actually very skilled in research, also good speech craft, sort of maybe a... Uh, colonial leader over here. What do we got? Perks is she's brawny and penalty is that she's disfigured after the fire. Lena did not really have a face, but she had a purpose. Few will look Lena in the eye. Damn. Okay. Maybe that'll kind of conflict with some of this high speech craft stuff over here. And we can see overall as a group, um, what skills are being covered. So for example, we don't have anyone who's particularly skilled at animal handling. Um, or carpentry, which might be a bad thing. Let's randomize Lena again. Let's see if we can roll someone. There we go. We've got some with some carpentry skill because that seems like the sort of thing that might be important. Uh, who is we? Who do we have in here? Hammond Woods instead. I should call him Hammond Eggs. I I'm, I make no apologies. Uh, it's interesting. He's got double passion over here. Very passionate for medicine, but zero skill. Uh, what are his perks? Laggardly, so he moves slowly and works slowly, Oof, and he's always chilly all the time too. Isabella Newbury uh, has got botany, construction, really good at construction actually, and culinary, and Gavis Shepherd. We'll go ahead with this group, heat resistance and gluttonous. All right, we got a fun little crew over here. We got a bit of an overview of what we got. Tutorial tips are enabled. Sure, that seems fine. I've only dabbled with this for, let's say a few minutes basically, enough to get a gist of it, but uh, we'll do what we can. The plague had ravaged the British Isles, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. Untold millions went to an early grave. Yeah, so it's an alt history, is what they actually say on the Steam page, right? It's it's uh, it's from our history, and then it goes a little sideways. Untold millions went to an early grave, and those left standing were plunged into poverty, brutally scarred by the horrors that they had witnessed. Nothing would ever be the same again. In the springtime of the year 1352, Hammond, Isabella, and Gewas set off into the wilderness to claim a piece of the land as their own, as was their right, in the eyes of God and under the law. Here, they may lay down the foundations for some kind of future. Perhaps hope will follow. Isabella is confident, defiant even. We will make this work. We will take our share of land. We will build there and we will defend it. Many have tried. Some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought. Yet many have also prevailed. Have faith. The place we found will stand for centuries from now. Our descendants will be there still. After many travails, they arrived in a valley with golden plains cut through by a snaking river. For Gouis, Gouis? I should have named him something else. I feel like it's like Lewis, but Gouis? Maybe we'll just call him Gouis. That sounds weird, but sure, let's go for it. It conjured visions of bountiful harvest, song, and wine. A place to put down roots, a homeland. They decided to title it Nether. So what, Hammond doesn't get a, get a bit in here? All right. So here's our, our, oops, our little starting situation. We can, I'm going to click through and past a lot of the little tool tips over here. Uh, we've got our starting, starting resources and our people are just wandering about. We can pause with the space bar. We've got some speed controls over here. If I open up job screen, a lot of these on the first click, I'll get a tutorial pop up. So I'll mostly just be dismissing those. I left the tutorials on in case I was going to hit something I hadn't experienced before. So again, very, very, um, very rim world 
ish reminiscent uh, again that is fine we love rimworld that's you know groovy so we've got 10 for uh, medicine stuff convalesce if you're sick hunting constructing growing so growing plants harvesting so harvesting can include picking up berries and mushrooms in the fields mining of resources we've got for example over here we've got some well, this is just some iron nuggets on the surface, but then we've also got some iron that we can actually mine here. Yeah, iron 100% that can be dug up. Uh, cutting plants, cooking, crafting, smithing, carpentry, tailoring, research, steward over here, which actually I'm not 100% sure what steward means yet, uh, and haul over here. So I'm curious to see what that will mean going forward. I guess it might just mean interacting, doing social stuff. That's perhaps the case over here. And we can see the various passions that people might have. I'll leave the priorities untouched for now. Uh, schedule also will look very familiar to everyone. Manage over here. This is something that I would appreciate in RimWorld without any mods. Uh, you can quickly go and set a filter and say, uh, Hammond, just try to keep a one-handed melee and a shield of some kind on you. And then we can even uh, edit these uh, these options over here. I'll let, let everything be uh, reset to the default over here. Oh, it should be no weapon. Uh, let everything be set to the default over here, but it was really nice to get this little management screen. The research screen, we don't have a research bench yet, so we can't access that. And then the region map mode over here, we can see other settlements that are nearby, and we'll see what that looks like. Then we've got a region influence meter over here. As our settlement grows, so does our influence. To gain influence, you must enrich your wealth by amassing resources and constructing buildings. Victory in battle and repelling enemy raids increase your influence even faster. Reaching 100% influence means your settlement is the most influential in the region. That sounds really cool. We got a few notices over here. Settlers are current idle, and we've got nowhere to store resources. If we click on that, it will actually very conveniently open the zone screen over me for me to set a stockpile. Tell you what, let's build a stockpile where our current resources are. God, that seems like a pretty brilliant idea. Um, and that's groovy. Now, these a lot of things are currently forbidden. I'm going to use the um, allow tool over here to do a big area. In fact, all these very resources. In fact, let me go, and we'll talk about some of the... Uh, the way the map looks and the Z levels in just a sec. There we go, we'll do that. I don't know if there's a way to do that in bulk, but I've allowed everything on the map. Maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not, I have no idea. Um, if we hold control and we mouse wheel, sorry, shift and mouse wheel? No, I thought it was control and mouse wheel. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, you can see this is the Z level. So I'm currently on the topmost level. If I scroll, it'll go down, 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 down into, then you can see the treetops start to disappear into the ground over here so we've got some z level stuff um we can just stay zoomed all the way out for now that's going to be okay we'll probably make some tweaks later on what is this over here we got some salt oh perfect and then we've got some trees i mean probably we'll need some wood for some construction tell you what let's go ahead if actually this is quite interesting if i click on say this cabbage pile um you can see this cabbage decaying because of the ground type and temperature one of the things in a rim world things decay if they're not roofed here as far as i can tell it's not the roof so much but the flooring so one of our first construction projects for example might just be to get a wooden floor or we have wicker or we have limestone let's say a wooden floor underneath our stockpile that'll help there's also temperature which the veggies will rot from the temperature but that's you know we're not gonna be able to deal with that quite yet uh, so we'll do that and we'll probably build an early barracks as well I'm gonna go ahead and unpause I feel like we'll probably want to want some more wood fairly early on so I'm gonna go ahead and chop some trees just around our settlement here construction is happening and that's going to be a-okay uh, the jobs seem to ha be handled from left to right and of course you can change the priority for example uh, Isabella here is um, oh she's actually really good at mining Wow that's kind of amazing Tell you what, Hammond over here, who's middling at mining but doesn't have passion for it, I'm going to go and drop his priority down for mining, maybe even like forbid him from working on the mines. Uh, so if there's a mining job, he really won't prioritize it. Maybe what we'll go is we'll updo the smithing. All the things that people actually have passion for, we'll, we'll upvote their particular uh, preference for handling that. So they will try to do the jobs they're passionate about first. Uh, we can click on people, we can get stat blocks from them, including... Uh, their current mood and you will see if they're getting job satisfaction from working things they like for example so we'll chop a few trees if we take a look at the cabbages they're still decaying because of temperature they're gonna rot in five days well last thing we wanted some stinky cabbages so hopefully we'll get our people to eat them uh, and that might be done for example let's go ahead and set up a little campfire over here so we can start cooking some food I'll, uh, I'll put it over here a little further away from where I might want the walls for this building later on We'll do that. We'll be able to make some meals. We'll want a research table soon, too. And uh, how about a place for them to sleep so they don't have to sleep outdoors? I'm going to make a little, like a little barracks, a little shared sleeping area. We've got, um, right now we only have access to hay sleeping spots. So we'll have to make, um, 
a very simple little barracks, maybe something like this. In my little test run, you could put this adjacent, but I just felt like, you know what, they'll look a little bit better if they're not right next to one another. And I'm just going to set up some walls. And again, I don't have to leave the extra gap here, but I think it might look better if we did that. We'll do that and then put in a door. It is smart enough if you build a wall and then you place a door, it will replace the wall for it, so that's going to be okay. Got a few more tutorials, which we're going to ignore over here. So we'll get a little communal barracks. Maybe at some point later on, this will get replaced with a bedroom for one. I want the walls to go up first. Once the walls and everything are done, and this will be considered sort of indoors, I'll slap some floor down there as well, so that people will have a nice little house for them. Oh, we do have a sword. Hmm. Do we have people? So who's our best hunter? I mean, it would be nice, ideally, I think, to hunt with a ranged weapon. Oh, we got spears. Oh, bows over here. All right, best hunter. Well, the only one with any real hunting skill whatsoever, I suppose, would be Hammond over here. So tell you what, Hammond, I'm going to encourage you to carry a ranged weapon. And I guess, is there any reason we don't want anyone to just use weapons all the time? Like, I can just say, listen, you're allowed to use any weapons and we'll just try to deal with whatever comes up at that point. I wonder, I don't know actually if there's any reason where it would be bad for them to carry weapons all the time. Um, but we'll see. There is a shield over here. Tell you what, we'll specify, uh, Isabella is already using a one-handed weapon, but we will specify that you use a one-handed weapon because then you can use a shield because we've got someone with a quarterstaff over here, the spear rather, who's doing that. Interesting. He did actually equip the short bow instead of long bow. Maybe that's okay. I don't know. So we'll get them sorted out. That's going to be all right. I don't know. I wonder if you can set up like designated hunting areas, you know, or automatic hunting or anything like that. I think um, we've got a hunt command over here and it can box things. So we'll see if we can hunt the deer. I haven't tried that yet. I'm curious to see how it'll go. Now we got our little house over here. And again, if I sort of scroll around, uh, if I zoom in, we can get the walls to sort of come up and down. Uh, this place is still not roofed though. So let's take a look at these beds. Description. Yeah, just some hay on the ground. It's not terribly good. Um, we're going to go and slap a roof on this building. Thatched roof. You can do this. You can rotate the roof with, I believe, R. Yeah, I think this looks a little bit better, but this feels maybe a little bit more practical. You know what? I like the look of it better, so I'm going to do that. And then I'll also go and throw down some wooden flooring in here. There you go. Oh, I don't know if I got the, the tile under the door, although I don't think the door tile is tileable. And actually, I floor it outside, but you know what? That's going to be fine. It's going to look all right. I'm okay with this. So get a little flooring. You can see the people gaining XP, which is nice. If you want, you can hide the roofs. I mean, right now it's just construction, so the, the roof showing and hiding isn't really doing much. Uh, but then the other thing, too, is, of course, I can just zoom in and it'll kind of hide the roofs that are being built somewhere in there. Okay. We got that. Let's go and set up some job for food. So over here at our little fireplace, I will create a meals job and I'll ask, uh, let's do it until we have 10 meals or I'll go ahead and say something like 20. Maybe, I don't know. It defaulted 10. Let's use 10 for now because that was the default. Um, I don't know how often the people eat. You know, is it three times a day? I'm guessing it's probably they get hungry once or twice a day just for ease of balance and various things. So tall grass over here. Current growth rate ripe. Plus, we can get some hay out of this, too. If I tell you to harvest, does it harvest the hay? It does. Because cut plant will cut all the plants. But a harvest, I think, will just grab things that are ripe and ready to be harvested. So let's grab a few things nearby. We'll get some hay. We'll get some berries. That's going to be very nice. Fine linen gambeson. Tough quilted doublet. Favored by infantry. Oh, it's armor! Ah! Did you go hunt? Yeah, you're hauling to the stockpile. Can we find out what you're hauling? Yep, no, I saw right there. He had the uh, the deer cow carcass. Well, I guess we'd better go and get a butchering table going on. I'm just going to put it next to the building over here. And on the other side, I mean, I'm, I'm sure we're not going to be keeping these here. But on the other side, I'll just put down a little research thing. I got an achievement. Reap what you sow. Nice. Then once the research table gets up, we can take a look at the research screen. So this is entering early access on June the 1st, which may or may not be the day that I release this video. I'm not exactly sure about the timing for it. Um, no idea how long the early access for this will last. 
But they are, you know, they do have a note when you start up the game. Hey, be careful, this game's still under development. There could be bugs, there could be stuff that's not finished yet. Um, I feel like, at least right now, it seems to have a very good base. The user interface, which is really important to kind of get right in games like this, feels very good, feels very comfortable. There's a bug report tool and a feedback tool built right in the game, which you like to see. We've got our almanac over here with more information about things. We can see the different production that we have available to us. Uh, historical records do of course love myself some statistics and some history over here so this is an entry for spring the first day of spring in 1352 i'm curious how many more entries of things will show up in there and it's very easy to see what people are doing harvesting resources well that's all everyone is doing currently i did flag a lot of stuff for it but that seems like an okay thing although maybe maybe i should go Ah, oh, it's because the cut plant. So Isabella, we could bring down your cut plant so that you'd start cooking or something instead. Hmm. The problem with Hammond is he really doesn't have a lot of really key skills over here. Maybe what I'll do is I'll bring down your cut plants. And you can at least default to a few other things. Just felt weird having everyone do it. So I'll probably finish one load of it. There you go. Oh, Isabella is actually starting to prepare food. Hammond is going to do some hauling for us, which sounds great. Gooey's, <laughs> gooey, um, gooey's, uh, what was that? Is it botany that went up to level 15? Something just went up. I like the on-screen pop-ups over here. I'm hoping this is going to have lots of modding support. We got some early, uh, little walls and traps that are going to be available to us. Uh, we can put up some cool banners, graves, pyres for consuming bodies, because you know there's going to be some fighting, a little fencing for crops and, and livestock. Uh, that's quite nice. Okay, so research. So the way research works in this is kind of different. Go away, tutorial. I'm about to explain it. We have these chronicles, and research happens instantly in this, but consumes chronicles. So the first thing we have to do is unlock architecture over here, which will give us access to wooden beams. As no requirements, it is going to consume 15 of our chronicles. So I'll click unlock on that. Groovy. Now we have this immediately. There's a little icon. This is available. Wooden beams. Done, done, done. There it is. Okay. Um, now, to do the next research, like agriculture, it'd be good to grow some plants. We need 15 chronicles. We only have 10 left over here. You can see it's sort of like allocated in the list. Uh, what we need to do is we produce research at the research bench. So I'm going to say something like do until we have 20. And we might want to set different numbers. What do these need? 15, 20, uh, 30 for defensive structures. Like I might just want to set. So this needs 30 chronicles followed by 20 textbooks over here. Um, so let me just set this to a target of 30 for now because it's going to cover a lot of things. So what our researchers do is they produce these chronicles. They write things down and then we can consume it, which, I mean, from a realistic point of view, it's a little weird that these chronicles are wild cards you can apply to any kind of research. But functionally, it works exactly the same as we're used to in lots of other games. You're going to have to spend a certain amount of time and it, then that will unlock research. The thing is, you don't have to pick the research ahead of time. Uh, oh, butcher's table. I want to produce meat from corpses, and I'm going to say something like do forever over here. If ever we've got a, a carcass, please butcher it as quickly as possible. And then Isabella is doing some cooking here. The simple uh, flat polygon looks over here, like relatively untextured. They're mostly, I mean, it might be textured or it could just be colored vertices, uh, which is another way that you can do art like this. A little bit of clipping for the clothes over there. But again, early access. And is it a problem? No, not really. But I like the uh, the art style for the characters. That's quite cool. Maybe they're going to go and add more texture detail later. Or maybe they won't. The thing is, it's actually quite a strong aesthetic choice, you know. Especially because you're going to play a lot of the game quite zoomed out. So sometimes if something has too many fine details in the texture, everything ends up looking sort of the same and muddy. And by having this stylized sort of simpler... It's not cell shaded but almost gives you that kind of vibe like cartoony hand painted cell shaded look it can work really good to make things pop so it'll be interesting to see where the art direction goes uh going forward but i have absolutely zero complaints about this i think this is swell um i mean that the roof texture maybe could be a little bit more something something maybe even like less detailed and more sort of flat and stylized this just looks like a little bit of uh just texture noise just because it's the uh, the hay all over but i have like genuinely i i think i quite enjoy the uh, the visual style and i think it's going to be pretty spiffy do uh the, the hardest thing is going to be getting a handle on like making sure we've got the right z level selected to showcase things um one thing I like is that these uh, rooms, they get automatic like tags over here. So this is considered a shared bedroom, which makes perfect sense. Maybe we can upgrade them to have uh, separate bedrooms at some point. We'll see. 
we are doing our research over here, we will get a pop-up over in the top right corner that will let us know when um, new research is available, when you've got enough stuff to make new research. And yeah, right now, the only thing we can do is Chronicles, so we can't even do textbooks. Maybe it needs a different kind of research station, maybe not. That's actually not how I expected them to sleep. You know what they're sleeping like? They're sleeping like, um, like V from uh, Cyberpunk. Just completely weird and sideways across their beds. Maybe... Hold on, is that how other people sleep? Am I the weird one for sleeping sort of, like, straight up and down on my bed? All my life has been a lie. I think uh, we could use a bigger stockpile. I think this is full. I mean, I can just drag out more of a stockpile. We could even put them inside of a room. Although, uh, it doesn't seem like things are temperature sense. Or, sorry, like, they, they're they not roof sensitive, and we don't have temperature control. And most things aren't rotting from temperature other than food stuff, and that's sort of just normal. Normal. We can't freeze things. Maybe there's different biomes, and maybe there's uh, frozen areas where things will be fr frozen through the winter. You can't grow crops, but at least your food won't go bad in those times. That could be. What about, let's try building like a little fence or something. Where was the... Oh, and actually, uh, we're right now we're having people eating without tables. We can also get down some leisure activities here. You know, I kind of want to build... Like, almost like a town square kind of thing. Maybe like an open concept thing centered around the fireplace? Yeah, I'm going to do something like that. So it's going to cut plants and harvest them in this area. But yeah, I'm going to have kind of an open area. I'm going to have a little dining table. So it's going to be out... Yeah, just outdoorsy. It would be cool if you could put in... I wonder if I can just use the beams, the pillars here, and then build a little bit of a roof on top of that and get sort of a covered but still outdoorsy area. Wouldn't that have a nice feeling? I'll have to experiment with that. I'm going to let them finish this job. So the harvesting and then the flooring first. And then we'll experiment with ways to make things pretty. Meanwhile, Isabella's still doing research, which sounds great. I like how the job is just writing. They're just writing their books. Um, no one, unfortunately, no one has any real passion for research. And no one's terribly good at it. A 4-4 four, four, and a 5 is actually really bad. Hmm. <clears throat> I could consider... Having Hammond, who has no real passion for much of anything, be maybe focused on research, so at least the skills will kind of center up on one person. That might not be a bad idea. Maybe I'll, I'll just bring Isabella and Gooey down to the five priority over here, and I'll bring Hammond up to a two. So he will still, well, tend if someone gets hurt, that's fine. If there's any smithing, he will do the smithing, because that's actually something he's interested in. He's got no skill for it, but he's at least interested in it. But then, otherwise, he's going to fill his time with research, until we hit the um, the document limit. But theoretically, then, you know, I'll immediately research something, consuming those documents, and then he'll go right back to work. So he might just be a full-time writer slash researcher right now. I wonder if I can give him a bench there. Seems like the sort of thing that might be the case. I don't know where the work spot for this is. Probably in the center. Oh, I can I, oh, I can put the stool underneath. It actually looks quite cool. Maybe I'll leave that be. So yeah, we'll get this area down. I think I really like this idea. And then we'll build buildings sort of around it. And then a wall outside of that. Wouldn't that be lovely? I think so. Okay, well, I said this was going to be a let's try. I think... Well, this is at least going to be the start of maybe a mini Let's Play, because I kind of want to keep playing today. Um, I'm always a little bit leery with some of the early access games, like to commit to a long Let's Play, because what if it sort of starts feeling complete? But there's definitely going to be multiple episodes of this. So stay tuned. We're going to wrap it up here. If you're new to the channel, which sometimes happens when there's a new series, hey, welcome. I hope you subscribe. And of course, with the new first episode of the new series, I do like to encourage people to like and comment and share it and all those sorts of things because it really does make a big difference on the channel folks i'm going to pause here i'm going to put in a cut and i'm going to see you next time for episode two of going medieval Bye bye